Hi, this is Sue from the Mountain Canary Company. Ed's going to visit with you about pack saddles. Go ahead, Ed. Hi, folks. Um, <clears throat> well, the last week, we had a real nice fella come by here and, uh, and uh, asked me to help him set up and build a pack saddle rigging for his pack saddle he bought. And he'd been over here prior to that, and I'd been helping him with different, different ideas and so forth. Uh, he's really a great guy. So we did that. And in the process, we took some photographs, plus other things, and uh, I posted them on, on, on Facebook. I got such interesting comments about that, I decided I'm going to move forward on pack saddles and our type of rigging and why we do everything the way we do it <clears throat> to share with you because I found it so valuable for him. And uh, um, so that's what we're going to do. Um, we rigged our pack saddles seriously different than other people and I'll probably talk about this more than once as we go through it but I'm going to give you a little history lesson here for years I've been studying pack saddles all from all over the world how they rigged them everything from the type you see in the Mediterranean to Austria um, the type you see in China the, the old, old girthless type that even have girth that kept on with a string those are amazing types of different ways to deal with pack saddles. One of the way we packed with pack saddles were a pad. And you'll find if you go into South American countries, you go into some of the, the uh, Middle East, that's all they throw is some kind of a pad on them and pack on top of that, if the animal's lucky enough. And so that whole process got me thinking. And the process, how they dealt with sore spots and so forth, I'm not going to give you a class on that. That's a video. We'd be here quite a while, but um, one things one of the things I found was, <clears throat> and having packed a lot and had problems I had to solve a lot, was that you don't want movement, you don't want your tree moving around front to back on your pad, and you and anything on you don't want your cargo moving around. Well, your anchor point on your saddles is always going to be your girth around the bottom of the animal. <coughs> <clears throat> now, having said that, though, you know, for it, it, it's an anchor point that comes up and builds and builds and builds of, of security. So if you bring your, you go from your anchor point, you go just straight up to the saddle, <clears throat> over the pad, there's going to be, if front or back girth, it doesn't make any difference, there's going to be movement on that tree, on the pad. There's going to be movement <clears throat> uh, of uh, your cargo then on the pad then the pad's going to want to move. So what you want to do is you want to make this, this unit as much of a one-piece unit as you can make. I found with these uh, most of these very successful packing systems around the world, more so than ours, <clears throat> was that they were all encapsulated as much of the, of the pad, the padding, the tree, everything was somewhat had to be one piece. As much as possible. Um, so you'd find that, for example, in the Mediterranean, they, they're, they're huge pads with exostructure, wood exostructure hoops that are built into them, but it's all built in and hooked. That whole pad is all part of that. When they pick it up, they pick up the whole thing. When you put it on, they put the whole thing on. And I looked at that for years and wondered, huh, that sure looks like an interesting idea. And they go up there and they pack everything on. They meet, they still to this day in parts of, of Greece and Crete, they'll miss on the islands, they'll meet a ship, they'll pack all the cargo on that ship on the mules and donkeys and horses and lead them through town. To, to, distributing at the stores as they go. Now that's kind of interesting. In Austria, you find in Austria and Hungary and uh, Romania and places, Bulgaria, you find that they very similar saddle. What they do is they take a pack horse, then they're big, gargantuous things, and they'll throw on a, they'll have a chain assembly, and they take this chain off, and you go over there, stick a stick in the ground, they hook a ring on, there's, now you got a basket. They'll just stand there and load that basket full of chunks of wood, I mean chunks, big chunks of wood. They'll get that side loaded, they'll go to the, <coughs> excuse me, <laughs> they'll go to the other side and do the same thing and all of a sudden they pull them all together. And, and just to have the pack saddle stay in one place, 
That's pretty amazing, impressive. That's because it's all one piece, and their and their their arches are over the front and the back. It's different. I, I'm not going to go out and invent that system. I called to Italy one time, talked to a saddle maker there, and I asked him about. It. He says, "God, they're heavy. Those are really heavy." Well, then I got further into um, <clears throat> further into research in this country of what we've done similar. Well, when when we started packing in this country, um, you really have to look at the West for packing. The East didn't do that level of packing. The East was pretty much, they packed over into the Appalachians, Kentucky and so forth, but the rest of that country was all wagon country. They, they used wagons. As soon as they got a road in, they made a wagon. They, going, in, going into Kentucky and so forth, as soon as they got a road, they used wagon. But you get to the Southwest, that was not wagon country. You go to the Northwest, that wasn't wagon country. So anything, anything produced west of the Mississippi were packers. And they started out doing the Spanish way. The Spanish way is just a big pad. A, a pad in Spanish is called Aparo. And then later when we started doing our, uh, our government started packing for the military, that's exactly what they do. They had a large pad full of, full of specifically sized grass with willow sticks in it for ribs inside. And they were able to then, that's what they packed on. They didn't have a tree. The pad itself was the tree and, and, and the works. So that's a simple, that's a simple system. And, and it can be done to this day. You can do it to this day. And that's, and, and so, um, but we're not there. I'm not going to go back and reinvent that wheel. I'm not going to sit down and sew me up a big pad today. <laughs> Who knows about tomorrow? But, <clears throat> so... What I did was I started looking at what I had. Well, necessity became the mother of invention for me. Uh, the pack saddle behind me was here, which is my last saw bucket on the rack here, was Miss, Miss Kitty's saddle. And I, I, I tried all kinds of different saddles. I've used all kinds of the adjustable floating bar types. The whole works, I've used them all. I've come back to solid trees. And I, when I first one I came back to was Miss Kitty. She was having a horrible time coming over the first divide, which is very steep, long and steep. And I was having one heck of a time with her saddle moving forward, just constantly moving forward on her coming off of that divide. Next thing you know, it's kind of darn her up on her ears. And I'm, I'd stop, no place to stop. I'd stop, wrestle that stuff back, try to get it back, over tighten the britches. She's shaving hair. And, you know, I wasn't happy. So I worried about that. I conjured on it for quite a while. I came up with the idea of completely redesigning her saddle. I got away from the floating barred saddle that was on her and I went down and went and bought a, a, a mule type tree for her. I put it on, shaped it, put it on. Next thing I did is I tabbed it. I tabbed it directly to directly to the saddle, like here and back there. It's hooked right to the saddle. So when you pick this up you get everything. So this is now one part of the part is all complete. Well then I next thing I did was <clears throat> let me drop it down here. I'm not hit myself here. Just some zero Z stuff. <clears throat> next thing I did was I thought, you know, I was doing all the reading up on the military stuff and how we'd and we we'd evolved from that apparero with a pad, where we evolved into a um, Another kind of saddle. It, it ended up being a Phillips pack saddle issue number 1928. In fact, if I got a chance, I'll put a note in here. Um, if you pull it up, you'll see the whole schematic, about eight pages of how the thing was built. It's fascinating. But it was a metal structure, just a metal exoscructure, somewhere in between the Aparero and the uh, Mediterranean type of trees. It was fascinating. So I, the one thing I looked at that, I said, you know, the, the thing i got to do to settle her tree down a little further is I've got to trap, figure a way to trap more pad. I have to anchor more pad to her. So now when this cinches up, this whole portion, not just under the tree, but this whole portion holds her side. <clears throat> well, I put her all together. Next trip I had for the divide, I was just excited to try it. Problem solved. That was it. Her saddle stayed 
except for normal movement, which is, you know, like a little movement, front and back, inch or two, front and back, is perfect. So after that, I started looking at, as I went along, I started looking at other saddles I had. Well, if that works for Miss Kitty, why don't I just take and rig them all that way, eliminating a lot of the potential cargo slips. It doesn't eliminate it completely, it reduces it completely a lot. So, that's how we got into this. But, um, we'll go back to this in a second, but one of the things I want to talk to you about real quick, like, like is <coughs> saddle trees. <coughs> now, a saddle tree is just like a saddle tree, pack saddle tree, is similar to a sat pack saddle tree under your saddle. It's still a, just a tree. I've got, got three of them down here on the floor. <coughs> I'm going to grab them. And the most common one you're going to see is this one. If take a closer look at it. This, this one is sold on all the, the inexpensive. Oh, saddle, saddle trees, saddle, saddle rigs, you'll see all rigged up, ready to sell. For, in the catalogs, you'll find them. Um, oh, um, farm supply stuff, uh, rally vet, all these guys are selling some of this, but this is how they do it, and they rig it with some kind of a, a nylon rigging. A lot of it's rigged out of a weaver. Well, if this is a tree that fits very, very few animals. They call it, it's called a humane tree. Now, it's not normally shaped like this. It's normally up in the front. If you'll notice, the cross box here slope back. That's the difference. They slope back. Okay? Now, this tree fits a lot of narrower animals. You'll see the twist in it. It's pretty narrow. That's why the saw bucks are forward. It's probably the same bucks as most of them, but they're just cut different and bent forward. That gives you that narrower twist in the front. But, this and other saddle trees I'm going to show you here real quick, like, all have had to be shaped. Now, most of them came with a front bar on them, like this mule tree, sh shaped round. Can you see it, sir? Just a minute, let me go down there. Okay. And, and you'll see right here, this isn't round like that. This isn't squared off. <clears throat> this, when I put it on the animal, I start, we started to shape it right, with a rasp. And the more we shaped it, the more we realized that this corner up here was stopping us from opening this corner down here. So what we did is we just simply went to work and cut this off. Kept cutting and cutting and cutting, and it slowly dropped the, dropped the tree down. So there's, there's a lot to this. But anyway, this is a, we'll get into saddle fitting someday, back saddle fitting someday, a lot more in depth, but I don't want to go too far. Okay, that's, that's a humane tree. Now, that fits, you can't fit some mules, not too many. They'd be young and lean. This is what they call a mule tree. <clears throat> You'll notice the bars go straight up and down and the rear bar bucks further back. That humane tree is a real pain in the neck to pack on because the slope in it. A slope in it makes your, your loads want to move back and forth. You can't quite get it up because it's pulling forward. Now these trees are a lot better. They're straight. This is a mule tree, they call it. They call it. <coughs> Whatever fits, is my opinion. And you'll notice that the, there's these, this, these bucks are straight. That's also known as a Tehama tree. Now, um, these, this, is a, this one fits a lot more mules. You see, it's a little wide. The bars are probably a little bit shorter. These can be cut down and fit to a, to a uh, donkey. This other one is also a Tehama type, <coughs> and you see the bucks are straight up and down, but this has a horse bar, much more similar to the, uh, to, uh, to, to the humane tree, but it's, the width is different, it's made different, and it fits a lot more horses' backs. I've had it on mules. It fits on whatever it fits on, but I have these two. Now these are, then we'll go to the... And we'll go to Decker trees. <coughs> now in that photograph, let's see over there, let's see over there, I'll have a picture of a, of a tree we just got done doing. Got done doing. It's finished. And this is a Decker tree, probably one of the best ones made up, as far as I'm concerned. 
It's made by um, Pronghorn Ironworks in Montana. And you can see it's tabbed off to the tree here. It's tabbed off to the pad here. It's sewed, now these tabs are sewed right down in the pad. And I've got a dog, I've got a collar up here that pulls the gullet up. So I got, I can look through, hey there, to the other end. <clears throat> and you'll notice on this one too <clears throat> that the straps here will run down over the pad. And actually keep, actually keep good pressure on that pad. That will help help to hold this in one piece. This these company makes two types of pack tr trees. In fact, they're working on a third one. They called me about the other day. They're working on a sawbuck, but they make two types of deckers. <clears throat> one of the deckers is a, is a, this is an OPR. It's an original decker pattern. Their hoops are a little bit taller than most, and the beauty of this tree compared to these, you see these are riveted. Being riveted, when you start to put a rasp on these to shape them, show the rivets right here. But the rasp gets you start, all of a sudden you run out of material if you run into a rivet. Now you're filing off a rivet head. That's not good. It's in your tree. <coughs> and this one, these screws are, and he's instead of two, there's three. These screws are run into T nuts. So they're in, in their press way in. So if you want to take and replace anything in here, or take it off for some reason, or it's broken, three three bolts, three screws on each side, take it off, put a new bar on. These are extremely good trees, and they're just a hair expensive more than this type, the other type from Valley Manufacturing. I have several of them here, <clears throat> but um, they're really well worth the money. They're a good good tree. And I'm surprised how many we've put on so far have fit almost out of the box so well. I can't believe it. And then they have one other one, which is a little more of a narrower horsey bar. They call it their south, south, Southwest Decker. I've got several of them around here, too. There's one right up there. That's uh, Darla's. Yep, that's one right up there. It fits Darla better because she's got that funny little front end on her. This fits much better on a wider back animal. So you can see we've gone through some of this stuff and thought it out and planned it. Um, yeah, I think I think this is going to be this will be an interesting series for you. We'll go into the different parts of this critter. I'm not going to do it here. I think I ought to, I think I ought to just. What do you guys think? You think I ought to go bring a mule in? Yeah, I hear you. Okay. For the next one, I'll bring a mule in. <clears throat> Maybe a horse. And I'll show you some different ideas. You see how this is rigged out here? This ring here, this, this whole rigging ring right here, that thing is so important. What it does is, wherever this ring ends up, these two rings will have to line up. So if I had this ring, her, her, yeah, these darn mules, a lot of them are built like uh, light bulbs. So they're narrow in the front and wide in the back. I could, say, I could say they have big bellies, but I just keep saying there's lots of lungs in there. But, but <clears throat> so this then will unfortunately sometimes creep up underneath their armpit. And we've dealt with that. We've come up with a couple, couple interesting solutions. One of the best ways is to put it, find where, where it fits best. In this case on Little Joe's, it fits better up here. Put the saddle in the right place. You'll notice that picture I just well, Pat posted here of the pretty palomino that I just worked on this last week. You'll see this bar, this pit, this creek back a little further, and this then and this one's pulled a little a little bit further too. Same tree. Problem being is that that horse is really slab sided and very straight under underside, and it's being a Morgan. It's got shorter back. That means Morgans and Arabs have one less vertebrae. In their back, so that means they're nice and short back. That means they're got strong backs, and so my concern was that with that slab side and straight under, that this cinch was going to walk up under under his armpit, and he had a big shoulder, <laughs> big shoulder to beat, and that was another child problem, and I think we solved it. We won't know until he puts him to work, and but this this rig here is set for Josie's pocket. That one was set for this this strap right here will define where that girth lines up 
around their belly and in that cinch pocket. And mules tend to have a smaller cinch pocket than many horses. And they, and they tend to be narrower in that spot. And that means that cinch wants to keep pushing forward. So one of the other things we tend to do is we, we make our own girths. And we make the girth to fit the animal to fit that pocket. So there's a lot ahead, ahead of here for you in the next, next coming to YouTubes. And I hope they'll hit some interest to you. So okay, that's all I'm going to end for right now. That's quite a bit. And uh, we're going to, next time around, my goal is to bring one of the girls in and uh, introduce you to a different one, maybe. And uh, put this on, and we'll go over the straps. And hopefully I get Sue up here talking about some of the other, other some of the other adjustments. Sue's the, Sue's the key adjustment person. And um, amongst many other things, she does better than anybody. By the way, Sue is the best drag rider in the world. I get so frustrated. Wait a minute, Ed, stop, 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 because I'm hearing from the back, back, way back there. Somebody's hollering at me. So I put everything in, put everything in wool, wool mode, and something's starting to work up there. She will watch those loads so carefully that they, if they threaten, even get the idea they want to loosen, Sue's up there checking them. And in most cases, she'll find that either there's the problem normally is is either the loose riding girth, the goose saddle girth, or the or the lash cinch girth. You know, first thing you get off, you tighten up, you tighten up your 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 cargo, line it all up, straighten it up, get everything all straightened up, tighten your cargo. Then you go back and you you tighten up your your pack saddle, being because everything's got to be lined up or you line, tighten it crooked. So you line up your pack saddle, tighten the saddle so it's in place. Then you let, tighten your lash rope. So you, go, you tighten your lash rope first so it doesn't fall off. You shove everything in place and tighten your girth. Then you go back and check that lash rope and I'll bet you you'll get a foot out of it or more. Okay, folks, I thank you very much. Suze, what do you got? Is anything added to that? No, that was, that was pretty good. You sure? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, folks. If you do, if, if you do us a favor, and actually do everybody else a favor too, and just oh, let's see that uh, share and subscribe type of thing. Yeah, it's important. It helps other people find out about us, and, and information gets out there. And, and one thing very, very important is remember: please ride as often as you can, but please, please ride safely. I want to see you all back here next time. <music>